Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed your weekends. With summer's end slowly approaching, expect more content since Halloween draws nearer and nearer. Though I've been enjoying doing the scary stories to tell in the dark series, I think it's time to take a break and let your minds and ears breathe a little. One last thing before I get things rolling. A huge shout out to Southern Cannibal for helping me out and hanging out with me in my live stream last Thursday. It's greatly appreciated, and I'm stoked to be able to call such a talented YouTuber a friend and ally. And a huge, huge shout out to Not So Norm for the awesome artwork. I'm still really blown away how he really captured myself into a character. I'll leave both of their channel links in the description below, so make sure to check them out and subscribe to their channels. Hopefully, in the near future, our spooky little family can have a collaboration for you all to enjoy. But now that all of that is out of the way, let's get the video started. This is Three Chilling Home Invasion Stories. This encounter happened right after New Year's of 2011 when I was 17 and a senior in high school. My parents had gone out of state to visit my grandparents, but I was taking a pretty rigorous course load and had exams and papers coming up, so I really couldn't afford to miss the classes to go with them. I had never been allowed to stay home alone with both parents being gone for so long. Never more than a couple of days, and my siblings were usually there. My parents were gone for nine days, and the night before they returned, shit got real. Having always been a night owl, it was perfectly normal for me to be awake at odd hours, 2, 3 a.m., just as I was on the night in question. I was sitting in my bed texting a good friend of mine, who was also a night owl, and browsing the internet when our three Labradors started barking like crazy. My family lived on 10 acres in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, in a pretty wooded area, so I assumed they had just seen a deer or raccoon or something. I didn't think anything of it for about 5 minutes, but then I hear what sounds most oddly like the window in the bedroom below mine, split level house, opening. I think to myself, silly, you're just tired and psyching yourself out. That lasted for just a few moments because I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. The stairs were directly next to my room, with the stairwell opening up right next to the door of my bedroom. I reached over to my door, not making a sound, and locked it. Afraid to make a sound, I asked the friend I had been texting to call 911 because there was someone in my house. My bedroom was near the living room and kitchen so I could hear the intruder trashing the kitchen, pulling open drawers, cabinets, tearing open a trash bag, and emptying it onto the floor. The 911 operator called my cell phone, but I was too afraid to answer. Thankfully, my friend stayed on the line with them, and we answered all other questions. I could hear the rustling slow down as the creeper moved a bit further from me into the living room. I hear steps retreat down the stairs again, and then silence. No dogs barking, no window opening. About 40 minutes of sitting not alone, scared, crying, after the initial 911 call, the police finally arrived. They tapped on my bedroom window, which scared the daylights out of me. I walked to the front door and then let them in. A detail that concerns me most about letting the police in. When I did, the security alarm started blaring. It had been armed the entire time. Another odd detail. The window that I heard open was the only entrance to the house that didn't have an alarm sensor. Nothing was taken, just sorted through, and a few days later, one of the neighbors called the police out for a similar incident. Truthfully, I don't know why my parents left me home alone because there had been a string of break-ins in the relative area in the weeks before. To my knowledge, there was never an arrest made in any of the cases. I think I would find uncovered windows at night a little eerie regardless, but I can easily trace the strong discomfort I felt for years to an incident that occurred when I was around 14 years old. About once a year, my mom would take all the curtains and mini blinds in the house down for a thorough cleaning and for some reason at this time, the front window of our house stayed bare for about a week. During that period, we had a cousin stay over and he slept on the living room couch just beneath the two windows that opened on our front porch. 
On the first night after he returned home, my mom and I were up late watching a movie while my dad turned in early for work the next day. I remember getting up from the couch to grab a snack or something and was confronted with the view of the couch and two windows upon my return from the kitchen. I noticed something strange about the window directly behind my mom and must have leaned forward and squinted because she said something to the effects of, not funny, cut it out. My eyes adjusted and revealed a face peeking around the side of the window and staring directly at me. I screamed at the top of my lungs, there's a man on our porch staring through the window, in all the squeaky glory of a prepubescent boy. My mom bolted from the couch with a yell and joined me in dashing down the hallway towards the safety of my dad. What followed will always remain one of my favorite memories of him. Armed with a machete, we were clearing brush earlier that day, he's not actually Danny Trejo. He charged out past us shouting, What the fuck are you doing here? And ran out onto our porch and then down into the front yard. Luckily for everyone, the stranger was nowhere to be seen. An hour later, a few county deputies arrived and took my statement in a vague description. Myself being the only one who saw the individual, the conversation had turned to the possibility of me mistaking a reflection from the television for a person when the deputies rushed out to respond to a home invasion a few miles away. I don't know for certain if my cousin sleeping in the living room or nearby home invasion were related, but my folks and I assumed that they were. What disturbs me the most about the incident is that the stranger watched me focus on him without attempting to hide and didn't run until he heard my dad. So peeper that forever ruined me for uncovered windows at night, let's not meet. To give you some background, I'm generally not easily scared. I like to stretch my mind and see how far I can go. Zombie nightmares? No problem. Scary movies? I've watched them all. I did notice, however, that there's one thing that keeps repeating in my dreams. I'm terrified of home invasions. If I ever dream about someone uninvited in my house, I freeze and can't move, can't scream, and can't run. So I've been doing some thinking as to why that may be, and I figured out exactly why. As a child, I lived in a fairly well-off town in Israel that was separated from a not-so-well-off city by a large field. When I was about five or six, I would sleep in my room with the door open so that I could see my parents' room across the hall since it made me feel safer. There would be this thing, though. I would wake up in the middle of the night for no particular reason and just stare at the doorway. Then, after a few seconds, I would see a silhouette of a person passing by, sometimes pausing at the doorway for a brief second before continuing. It scared the shit out of me, and I would force myself to cry so that my parents would come and check on me. But they never found anything and attributed to a bad dreams. This probably happened about four or five times. About a year later, my parents woke up one day to find the drawers in my dad's desk completely out and empty. My dad asked my mom whether she messed around with him. Clearly, she didn't, so we installed an alarm system. Honestly, with the alarm system, it was worse. One night I woke up, again, apparent for no reason, and seconds later this piercing rang through the house and wouldn't stop. I freak out, jump out of my bed, and look towards my parents' room. Just then, I see the silhouette of a person sprinting across my doorway and down the hallway. By the time my parents got out of their bed and the person was already out of the house, leaving the large door to the house wide open. This happened three fucking times. We started getting preemptive. We got one of those motion sensors that play a recorded message when activated. My mom recorded a get out of here you fucking thief type message and put it next to the main door of the house. One night I wake up again for no apparent reason although I think I know why by now 
and two seconds later, I hear my mom's recorded message cursing at the thief. A few seconds later, I hear footsteps and someone running away. At least it worked. That was the last time that happened. When I was 13, we moved to another country, but would always go back in the summer to visit our extended family and typically stayed at my grandma's. One of my favorite things to do is stay up late at my grandma's house in Tel Aviv in the living room and watch National Geographic after everyone went to sleep. I don't know why, I find it very relaxing I guess. I was about 14 watching National Geographic at 2am and I get that fucking feeling. The one that made me wake up when I was little for no apparent reason, except I was awake. I concluded that it was probably nothing, but just in case I put both of my hands up in a middle finger the whole room slowly. I figured if anyone was watching me, they would have gone away after seeing that. So at around 3am, I decide to go up to my bed on the second floor, but on my way up I notice my mom's bag is on the table. I consider moving it somewhere further away from the window in case someone wanted to grab it with a broomstick or something. I decide not to because it's probably not going to happen and what if she woke up and won't find it, freak out and call the police? So I'm in my bedroom reading a book about ghosts. I was pretty spiritual at 14 and really wanted to believe. I say in my mind, okay, if you guys are real, give me a sign. The light flickers a little. Hmm, that could be anything, I'm going to need a bigger sign. At that moment, I hear a huge boom from downstairs. I come out of my room and at the same time my mom comes out of her room and my grandma comes out of hers. They ask me why I'm making so much noise. I tell them that I'm not and that I think there's someone downstairs. My mom tells me, nonsense, it must just be, boom. My mom freaks the fuck out and starts th screaming things like, get out of here you thief and just in general screaming in the direction of the first floor. After a few minutes, she goes down and granted, the window is broken and the bag is gone from the table. Someone took it. I hate home invasions.